What's happening, family? What's going on? Welcome back to another episode of Is, is This, this Going to Cause an argument? argument? I'm one of your hosts, Marcus Tanksley, a.k.a. Tank. And the other host is? I am his wife of 15 years. I go by Angel Tanksley, Angel Lakita Moore, and that chick angel, and that chick angel. If this is your first time tuning in, this is a weekly podcast that me and my hubby does. We do, you know. Yeah. We does is what I was going to say, and then I was like, you know what? No, not today. Today we do. Uh, as I said, it's a weekly podcast that we have produced where we get to talk about things that are uh, personal to us as well as things out in the world and family. So if this is your first time tuning in, what's up? Wherever you're listening, please rate and review us. It makes us more discoverable. Did you see how many ratings we have on Apple Podcasts now? I don't be seeing. I got to go over there. Yeah, no, computer. you have to. You oh, Wait a minute. No, you can go from your phone. Can I? Yes, this little purple icon on your iPhone. I got Apple Podcast, don't I? Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> My husband really be acting like Apple is the devil. No, I don't. What did I mean, you act like? Stupid. You can't get your own text messages to I yourself. Do. I have them now. Something was going on. <laughs> that was an issue. <laughs> it was. There was a huge issue and it was pissing me off. Let's see here. We have over 885 reviews. Oh, well, we have a 4.9 rating out of five. I'll take it. Listen, Absolutely. the way we were inconsistent uh, from the start. Man, for the first five years. <laughs> we'll take it. Yeah, but, we do. But anyways, you can rate and review us there on Apple Podcasts, or you can watch us on YouTube if you're not watching us. Um, we have some amazing sponsors today. We have ZocDoc, which uh-huh. I'm surely excited about. As Y'all well better as, be excited about that, ZocDoc. As well as Thrive Market. We'll be telling you about them later on in the podcast. And then tell them about the... Special people that we got here. We got the special people with us, our media family. That is our Patreon. Beep, beep, hey, beep, they right beep. here, right now. We are sitting here watching their little comments come up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, some of them got some little comments because they're calling me a heifer. Well, you are uh, the king heifer, babe. And um, anyway, so they the people that watch this live. They watch us fumble. They watch us argue. They watch us and help us celebrate as well. Anyway, you can be a part of that Patreon. You can go to patreon.com slash thatchickangel. And for the low, low $5 a month, you can be a part of our media family. Come on through. Other than them watching this uh, uh, live, this mm-hmm. Friday, we're doing a crafts and cocktail virtually. Hey. It's for our Patreon only. Only. Uh, so Patreon, y'all be on the lookout. <clears throat> I'll be posting the flyer today. But for those of you all who are not, go on ahead and have FOMO or just pay the $5 and be a yeah, part of the Patreon. $5. Absolutely. Everything good with you? Everything's Gucci with me. Everything good yeah. with you? Can't complain. I'm all up in the building. You, okay. All up in the building. Are you? Are Tanks you now? in the building. Okay. Yeah, Go ahead and say uh, the thing that you said off camera that you were like, can no, I say, say it? Oh, you ain't going to uh, say no, it? No, we don't need to say it. Moving I'm gonna say on. It. I'm going to say it later. Moving on. Well, if you say your part, I'm going to say my part. <laughs> but we ain't talking about that. It's, it, it, right now, it's not about that. It's about this Tanksley pride. It's our first uh, segment that we're doing right now. Yes, Tanksley Pride. Are you uh, for, for those that don't know, Tanksley Pride is what we call our four boys. Uh, they are the Tanksley Pride. Uh, we have the oldest is 12. He's about to be 13. God dang. Mm-hmm. We got twins that are seven who started school today on Monday. And then we got a three-year-old. Why you, why you play my child like that? That's all. He, we have them are. You, you want to kick it off? You want me to kick it no, off? kick it off. Tank Sleep Pride. Amar is, I want to say, maybe a month shy of being potty trained. Yes. We have gotten so close. He uses the toilet on a regular basis. He uses it at preschool on a regular basis. It's that poop, obviously, that we don't have down pat. And yeah. then sometimes he's choosing to be lazy. Like... When he knows his body is getting ready to make a crap, he'll go find a diaper and ask for us to put it on. He'll be yeah, like, yeah. mommy diaper. Yeah, when he said put that on. yesterday, I was like, don't you put that diaper on. He's got to use the bathroom. He's mad for a reason because uh-huh. he's got a turtle head sticking out, and he needs somewhere to put it. He but he was constipated bathroom. because he sat on that toilet. I said he disappeared, so we know if he disappears that he's trying to go poop. And he had on that diaper, so I ran upstairs. I was like... He was in the twins room. I said, do you got to go poop? He said, yeah. I said, do you? I said, do you got to go poop? He said, yeah. 
<laughs> I said, okay, well, let's do it on the toilet. He sat on the toilet for a solid 20 minutes because he had his uh, iPad that he got for his birthday. And nothing happened. I said, did you go, did you use the potty? He was like, yeah. And I looked, the potty was dry. But he finally did what he had to do late that night. And I see why it didn't happen. Well, at that least based thing. off of what you said. He dropped a brown softball. <laughs> That's my thing. And I ain't talking about soft as in the material. Like if you were to go to the store and buy a softball, <laughs> that's how hard that thing was and the size. No, bless his little heart from all them Lunchables. I know that was a, whew. Uh, that's <laughs> what woke him up out of his sleep. Oh, my God. Yeah, he did not want to go back to sleep. I get it. He was like, y'all, I birthed a child. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Got to burn this energy off that my body built up this adrenaline. <laughs> yes. So it's exciting to know that we'll, we're will we very close to being out of diapers until we have grandkids or until we're in them. Uh, it has that been a long the, road. That was one of the reasons. I was like, we've been literally changing diapers for 12, almost 12 years. I don't want any more children. We have not been changing diapers for 12, 12 years. It was, uh, how was Marcus? It's we've only changed diapers for a total of let's see here, uh, we're on year like eight in that. Yeah, that's a long time. Not eight, Jesus, I'm making up math. Seven. It's still a long time to be changing diapers. Well, that's my Tanksley Pride story. I'm proud of my little bad baby. Oh, he's awful. <laughs> my Tanksley Pride story <laughs> is uh, I actually told Victory and Angel about this. These twins be making me feel old. They were having a conversation the other day on the verge of arguing, pretty much. That's all. That's how they communicate with each other. And Cy goes on this tangent, and Kai is just letting him talk. And as soon as Cy's done, Kai said, and I quote, bruh, that's all cap. Yeah, yeah. I said. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm listening. I'm like, what did he just say? Yeah. Like, confident, like, nah, bruh, that's all cap. I was like, <laughs> all of it. Like, how old am I for my children to be saying this? Not same. even the oldest to be like, bruh, all cap. I still don't know what cap means. I still don't know. People <laughs> say it know? all the time. I think half the people that use it my age still don't know what it means. You're lying. See, I, I've, I've heard it used in different ways. How? Whoever, what other way that you hear people saying it is yeah, wrong. Yeah, I've heard, yeah, well, Exactly. Who's right? No, I'm telling you. No, nah, that's over... what's wrong with all these old ass people. They using this label like, nah, how you you I ain't saying you wrong. I ain't ne- I don't saying... use it because it sounds goofy coming it out of my yeah, mouth. Sounds, but I know I, exactly I've never used it because I'm like, I hear people saying, hey, man, it's cap. What what are you talking about? So if you were like uppercase to... or uppercase, like what does cap mean? Is it an acronym? So if you were like, I used to uh I used to bench press six hundred six hundred pounds at my at my best, people be like Okay, that's cap. Yeah, that you are sounds, exaggerating. Use a lie. To me. You're covering the truth. Cap. All right, just I don't. Yeah, this sounds ridiculous. All as slang should, sounds as it should. Right. I'm, I'm forty. Think about the stupid crap we used to say back in the day. Our stuff made sense. With tight. <laughs> <laughs> Cat. We used to say Trunda. <laughs> Nobody said Trunda, but you and Nina. Okay, no, that's not who used to say it. It hmm. was Michael. It was not me All and right. Nina. It was six Lexington chicks that said Trunda. Michael's not even from Lexington. But she lived there long enough to pick up she some of the trash She is from crap. Louisville. What's, it's a 45-minute difference. It's an hour difference, and it's a completely different culture. Anyway, Trunda, ain't nobody said Trunda. It was a mixer, mixture of Thunder. Cause that used to we be. We see what it is. And uh, oh, we what was that what other word? Is. Word trill. Yeah. Yep. Tronda. Eh. Yeah. Yeah. Cap means insult. Yeah. That's a yeah. Anyway, I heard him say that, and I'm like, what is it really coming to? There was another conversation that uh, Angel was having with them. What were you reading? What comment were you reading? Um. You said think. cap means what? Oh, Nisha, old school captain means, and so uh, that's old school. Yeah. Anyway, um, Angel was having a conversation with him, and she was was it a student, a uh, helper or something? I don't know. Angel was talking about this young man that might be help. Anyway, she said it's an old gentleman. He's he's like twenty years old talking to the twins, 
But the fact that she was talking about somebody referring to him as old in reference to the kids, and I'm like, this boy is 20. It was the other way around. What was it? I said, he's a baby, though. He's only 20. And you were like, in their mind. In their mind, he is old. Yes. He's an old man if he's 20. But she's calling him a baby. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. The fact that we legitimately could have had, could have a 20, no, that we could have a 20-year-old and it not have been done in a way that people would be like, oh, no, look at you. No, that would have been right on time. If I told you I had a 20-year-old, oh, really? Was y'all married? Yeah, we was married and everything. We were married for two years by the time we had that boy. <laughs> that it's crazy. It makes perfect sense. It's crazy. I thank God. I mean, uh, sometimes I'd be wishing I was one of them um, young parents that had kids when they were like, yeah, early, yeah, early, early. Yeah. and their kids 19, are 20, 21. fully grown. Just grown. They out here just living their life. They forty, just <laughs> oh, living it up. Oh, just like, oh, is the world's your oyster all over again? Ah, huh? uh, they like yeah, no. Um, uh, we going, we going to Jamaica. We gonna come back in town because our son, he's got this thing at his a banquet at his job. So we gonna come because yeah. they're giving him an award. But then we gonna go back out of the country. Like yeah. I was talking to a lady recently. She said we used to it was talking about anniversary trips, and she was telling me, "Yeah, we used to be like y'all and just you know leave our kids and then go out and then we do family trips, everybody together." She said, "But now they're old enough. Like me and my husband, we go out and then they just let us know all the great places to drink and we just join up with them." I'm like, "What kind of life is that?" I don't know what you're gonna be like you know, when you're able to drink with little Marcus. I don't know. What if he's like, I don't, I don't drink. I'll be fine with that. And then you'd be like, yeah, you could be the designated Good. driver. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> here, go, yeah, yeah. jump in here. You can drive the Mustang. <laughs> I'll drive, get on in. Where we going to go? Go, uh, boo, huh? Yes. <laughs> yeah, let me get my, uh, let me get my cane. It's what, uh, another little bit, uh, real quick, Tank Sleep Pride story. Uh, we have a close friend named Aleem that Marcus has brought up several times. He hasn't, uh, because of the pandemic, there are a lot of our close friends that we really don't see often. It's very sparingly. And Aleem came by the house this weekend, <clears throat> and we made sure all the boys. Yeah, I mean, yeah. of course, Amar ignored him because that's what Amar yeah. does, but the twins came up to hug him. He's extremely excited to see all the boys. He's like, hey, hey, what's happening? Then he sees little Marcus. Because he's like, it's all going to leave. My little Marcus comes down into the garage and hugs they, him. Yeah, no, no. They wave at each other. He's walking over. He's like, hey, little Marcus. Still hasn't clicked. It has not clicked to him that Marcus has grown a foot in some since he saw him last. Yeah. It wasn't until after they hugged and little Marcus had to put his head like yeah. down <laughs> on him. <laughs> And he let go of the hug. And then he was like, no, he hugged him. Yeah, hugged He's him. like, hey, yeah. And then he He's was like, like oh. Whoa. <laughs> he lost it. Because <laughs> it didn't register. <laughs> he just hugged Marcus. And then after he hugged him, he was backing up. And you seen his face change like, what Twilight Zone am I Right. <laughs> right. It happened so. And then Marcus. <laughs> yeah, laughing. <laughs> and it's hard to sometimes realize how big he is because he still has such a kid face and kid-like demeanor. So even when Brisha had come over and he bit because he still hugs people like he's a child. He puts his head into you. Yeah. So he's bending over, well over, curled yeah, over been like been taller than Brisha for a long time. Brisha was like, stand up straight. Yeah, Brisha stand trying up straight, boy. Brisha trying to hug him now like he's a man to where it's like <laughs> she would bring herself in. He's like, No, I'm the kid, so I'm going to curl yeah, over. He passed her when we was at the other house. We were at the beginning of the pandemic. The beginning of the pandemic, he was already taller than Brisha. That's two years ago. <laughs> Ridiculous. I'm like, that's a that's a poor bar, just like his Aunt Daisy. I'm like, that's, that's oh a, yeah. That's a he's bad a whole bar. foot taller than my sister. <laughs> I think Victory pointed out. Like, look, I said Vic, that was a long time ago. I that's mean, <laughs> truly, Daisy didn't have. I mean, Amar's on her heels. <laughs> so, <laughs> see, Daisy, if you see this, it ain't me. <laughs> of course. Okay. So, real quick, before you were to book like a brunch at a restaurant, I know I have a lot of friends, and now I'm more. I'm more prone to do this, especially I look at reviews. I want to know, are people saying this is a dope place, especially if it's not going to be a restaurant that's close to me, right? So the question goes, why wouldn't you do the same thing when you're trying to find a doctor, right? 
With ZocDoc, you can see real verified patient reviews to help you find the right doctor in your network and in your neighborhood. After all, finding the right doctor is just is is just as if not more important than finding the right plate of eggs Benedict, right? So if you're going to spend all this time trying to find a good restaurant, you got to spend some time finding a good doctor for yourself. So if the doctor, if your doctor can recite every line of a movie from Ferris, uh, Ferris Bueller's Day Off, but they can't remember your name, it's time to find a different doctor, right? <laughs> and you can do that with ZocDoc. ZocDoc makes it easy to find quality doctors in your network and in your neighborhood. Plus, with real verified patient reviews, you can find the right doctor for you, one that actually remembers your name. I am huge on bedside manner when it comes to doctors. I want you to feel familiar to me. I want you to feel collaborative to me. And those are the type of reviews that I need to find out because those doctors that are cold, that just see you as a a claim number, I want no parts of, right? So... Um, <laughs> this ad is so funny to me. It's just like if you're a fan of sushi and you really like to eat sushi like Marcus. However, Marcus is not going to go to a gas station and get sushi. I'm not. You're just not going to do it. The same thing goes for finding the right doctor. With ZocDoc, you can find the right doctor for you in your network and in your neighborhood. One that makes you feel like you're in good hands, you're supported, and you're heard, even if you're telling them about your favorite sushi place. Um, booking is really, really, really easy. Um, uh, You remember the game Battleship? Absolutely. Right. And it could be uh, frustrating if you couldn't, like, get your, like, if you were, like, really close, but you couldn't figure out which way the ship was supposed to go, right? Mm -hmm. And you're, like, so close. That can feel like what it is trying to get an appointment with a doctor. It's like you're close. You're finding a doctor you like. But then when you go to try to make an appointment, they're like, ah, so sorry. Can't see you in three months. Well, Doc Doc booking a doctor, uh, an appointment with a doctor that suits your needs, fits your schedule, and is in your network and is in your neighborhood is easy. ZocDoc is a free app that shows you doctors who are patient reviews, take your assurance, and are available when you need them. And on ZocDoc, you can find every specialist under the sun, whether you're trying to straighten your teeth, fix an achy back, get a mold checked out, or anything else. ZocDoc has you covered. ZocDoc mobile app is as easy as ordering a ride to a restaurant or getting delivery to your house. A search, find, and book doctors in a few taps. Uh, again, you get uh, you can find and review local doctors, get real verified patient reviews, uh, people who have made real appointments. That's what we're going to direct Victory to using when she starts to book her primary care physician. You know, Victory is our niece who moved out here as our personal assistant. So she's getting all that set up. Well, ZocDoc will be able to help her to find all the doctors that she needs. So go to ZocDoc.com and find the doctor that's right for you. Book an appointment in person or remotely that works for your schedule. Every month, millions of people use ZocDoc. We're one of them. It's our go-to whenever we need to find and book a quality doctor. Go to ZocDoc.com slash Argie and download the ZocDoc app for free. Then start your search for a top-rated doctor today. Many are available within 24 hours. That's Z-O-C-D-O-C dot com slash Argie. Argie. ZocDoc.com slash Argue. Argue. Sure. Anyway, moving on. Next, we got up Hot Tanksley Take. Hot Tanksley Take. So, Hot Tanksley Take is uh, usually, I don't know if Angel's going to do it again, but usually it's when uh, one, of, we, one of us will give our quote unquote unpopular opinion about a subject a trend or whatever it may be. And it's usually at random. We don't know what it's going to be when it's brought up, but we just talk about it. Mm-hmm. So w- w- you, you got one? No topic. No, throw me one. You didn't done, you, one? you didn't done okay. about 15 of them. I've only done one. All right. Um, cars. Uh, <laughs> cars. You know, I probably didn't have such an issue with cars until I married a car person. Now cars irritate the hell out of me. You know why cars irritate the hell out of me? Is because they should just be customizable. Like these cars and makes and models and stuff, that's just stupid. Mm-hmm. I should be able to go to a factory, tell them I need this many seats, I need this much trunk space, I need these things are important to me, and they just build that. But instead, that. but no, but it's not as easy to do. Like it, that's oh, it's gonna cost an astronomical amount. That's of money. not. That's just <laughs> stupid. Like give the frame can be similar. You can have a bunch of different like frames to choose from. But having to go to these 
different car dealerships and knowing that one car is going to have everything but the one important thing that you need. Then another car is going to have everything else but a, a different one thing. And it's just stupid. <clears throat> For instance, we had the expedition, the ex, the Ford Expedition. Size was great, but it was something about it. Like, it, the oh, Ford. That's it was what was the, Ford. About, yeah, that was <laughs> the, the Ford. Actually, it wasn't even the Ford. It was having to take it into Ford. Taking it into Ford and getting it fixed. They would they would kidnap my car for all of three months to fix something that they claimed would only take a day to fix. So after that happened twice or three times, I was like, I'm not having it. Within the first year. I was like, this is dumb. So then we go to Infinity. Okay, the Infinity is cute. It's, no, Mercedes first. No, I'm talking about what we oh, own. Okay, okay, you're right. Uh, we go to Infinity. Infinity's cute, but it's this big, bulky car with space that is misused. It's Y'all know I QX80. got stuff. Yeah, the QX80, so the biggest one. I got a bunch of stuff. I ain't got no place to put that crap. They didn't gave me an armrest that's big enough to change a whole baby's diaper, a whole baby on a toddler, mm-hmm. but I ain't got no place to put my keys. I gotta put it in the cup holder. Then where do my cups go? Uh, you can't. I don't want to put it in the little pouch where you put where you post the um, what you call it? Uh, charge your phone because that's not where stuff is supposed to go. Your phone is supposed to go there, but instead I gotta put the key to get into this building in there because I ain't got no place to put stuff. I just think it's stupid that cars <laughs> aren't made to suit the person. Instead, cars are made for what looks cute on the road. Mm-hmm. That's just dumb. And then the fact all these electric cars are coming out and they said, F the families that are large. If you want, uh, everybody's like, oh, you should get this, you should get that. If, unless my kids are about to turn into origami and fold their legs behind their head, mm-hmm. ain't no point in us looking at nothing electric. We just going to be out here killing the o- ozone layer with our gas guzzling cars. But, w- but by that time, little Marcus is going to be off to college. He going to be gone. We still going to need that back row, but he going to be gone. I'm just saying, it's stupid. That is why cars be pissing me the hell off. <laughs> this is wonderful. Just hearing her talk like this. <laughs> you so make it seem so easy. I no, but learned the, from uh, the best. Infinity is definitely like, they need to upgrade that thing because that Infinity QX80 is huge. It's enormous on the outside. But the space used is like you get in on the inside and it's like, what happened? I mean, what happened? What happened to all this massive space? Why does this thing look so enormous from the outside? And you sit in it, and it's like, okay, where is the space? The trunk is a manila envelope. That's how big it is. Put some checks in it, and you're done. You ain't got no more space. Behind that third row is, it's already, like, small on most vehicles. But on that, it's like, you you can put a briefcase back there. That's about it. And then then you put a book back there, and that thing's going to be busting open. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> oh, it makes me so mad. Luggage? For, you better hold your luggage yeah. in your lap. You you, gotta, you can't have any more than four people. And then it just throws gas out of its mouth. Yeah. It's like it's – I remember Kai. Kai used to uh, – I used to breastfeed him. He would drink so much. I'm talking about get full. And then he would projectile vomit at yeah. least half of it's the – like a water, like a squirt out of a water. <laughs> That's how it would shoot out. <laughs> That's what I feel like my infinity does. I'll fill it up. I'll drive up the street and it'll be like, <laughs> I'll be yeah. like, how am I on a half a tank already? That's they drive train. They didn't upgrade none of that. They just put a pretty face and new stuff on the same old frame of vehicle. It's so. Toyota finally upgraded. Would they upgrade? The, the, you don't want it. The Sequoia. So oh. they upgraded. They actually upgraded the powertrain and engine, so it ain't getting eight miles to the gallon. It's actually doing a whole lot better with more power. It's it, there's no space in that third row. That's why behind the third row. No, the third row is not. It's yeah, it is not in your mama's. I've sat back here. It's about the same as as mine. As is yours. What the third row? Of, I don't know. It's been a long time. So of the no, navigator, no, no, no. I'm like, you've no, two, lost your mind. Two adults can fit back here, but not three. Yeah, yeah. No, you yours is huge. Behind, in mine. Yeah. Um, I concur with all that. That was one. That brought me great joy. You're very welcome, <laughs> babe. That's what 15 it's years true, are giving. though. You got to go in. You should be able to get what you want. Yeah, I don't understand. Yeah. I do not understand. I mean, it'd be extreme, like you said. It could be uh, the same way. Henry Ford uh, changed the way cars are made. You know, before he came along and 
almost invented the assembly line. Yeah. They can just recreate how vehicles are made. It's just like you got the same frame, you got the same motor, you got the same everything. What do you need on the inside? It's like, uh, you know, these housing developments where mm-hmm. they have model homes. Yeah. And then you do all the little upgrades you need to it on the inside yeah. based off of what you need. Some people don't need hardwood. They're like, give me the laminate because I'm not into that. So for me, you know, I'm not into leather seats like that. I'll be like, give me cloth seats. I'm fine. But what I do need is uh, some space in between the seats so that yeah. I have compartments. I need some good AC. It's it's yeah. just also and they, stupid. And you can customize them like, all right, since I have a navigator, you got the option between the extra long, the long version, which is what I have, or the shorter body. You get the option between the captain seats. You can get the big console or the bench going across the middle seat. Um but that's about it. That's the, that's the only options you get out of larger SUVs. It's you get the, so frustrating. Between uh, GM and Ford, you get the long version or the short version, and you get to choose between a bench or captain seats. But that's about it. I hate it. What are we talking about next? <laughs> <laughs> I hate it so much. Infinity, you disappointed us. Uh, so today, our main topic, family, we are talking about what our top three skills are and what would we do to compensate if we lost our number one top skill. Oh my gosh. That's interesting. Oh my gosh. Top three. Top three skill. That's okay. And are we going to, are we going to categorize these as physical skills that we're capable of? Or when I first read it, I thought it was referring to, I already went to survival, but not in like the wilderness, like in life, like what's your, Mm -hmm. you know, how do you be, how do you succeed in the regular world? Yeah. And what's your thing there Mm -hmm. as far as like, oh, well, I'm, I'm really street smart. I pick up on blah, blah, blah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So what, how are we doing it? Are we doing skills? Are we doing talents? Are we doing? I think it's all included. Skills and talent. That's a talent is a skill. I, yes. But like certain skills, you wouldn't call a talent. Like what? Um, the fact that, uh, like, you hanging up curtain rods is really easy. That's a skill. You wouldn't be, if somebody said, do you have a talent? You wouldn't be like, I can't get these curtain rods real fast, talent. real straight. looking into somebody else that may consider it a talent. Talent, I'm saying, is usually considered, has a, a little bit more of an artistic approach when thinking of a talent. Nigga, nah, it's whatever skull. you want to. God it's whatever it. you want to. <laughs> Why you over here got me having to have uh, <laughs> edit that out? What? You didn't even hear me. That's fine. You 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 need to get it together. I am together. So we doing what? It's however you want to. You, okay. What's your top? What's what's your third one? My lo- my third one. That's this is a difficult question. We should have thought about this. Um, my top three. What what do you think they are? For you? Yeah. Your uh, third one would be your actual strength. My physical strength? Yes. Okay. I would say th- that is one in your top three skills is that you're actually physically strong. Okay. Yours, one of your three, would be, I'd say that's your top one. Well, whether wherever you want to put it, is your intelligence. Oh, well, thank you, sir. Shoot. (laughs) Thanks. Uh, Yours in a more specific way that I would say, I won't use intelligence as a blanket statement, but um, the way you understand mechanics. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that is a huge skill. Like you can um, look at something that is mechanical in nature and see how it operates. And if something in it, you know, not sure how complex it can be, but if something in it isn't working, being able to um, deduce or diagnose what the thing is that's not, you know, that's Mm -hmm. causing, you're like, oh, that's not getting enough air, which is causing this to do that. I would say that is number two, if not number one for you. Okay. So I got strength and inkling and uh, mechanical inclinization. Oh, come on. <laughs> that ain't a word, but it is now. <laughs> it is now, babe. Uh, so your intelligence, and I would have to say your uh um your 
per- perception of what? the way you view things. What you mean? Like you can ask ten people. You are one of those ten people. Um, what do you think about this particular situation? And out of the ten people, yours will sound completely different from everybody else. Mm, okay. I don't know what. Uh, okay. Like you will approach your thought process, you will approach something completely different from most people. Okay. I don't know what the word is for that, but I I, I understand what you're saying. The skill is. Yeah. yeah this. Did, uh, it could be discernment, nah, but I would, no. I would consider it discernment. It's like if you have I don't know boxes laying across the floor. This is a horrible example, but kind of what I'm saying. The way Angel looks at things, and you say you have to get all of these boxes in reverse order without crossing one over the other. Most people would like go about it a certain way where Angel would step back and look and do something completely different from everybody else. I don't know what that is. I, I wouldn't even say that I'm actually that good at that, but I'm going to take right, it. Boxes was a bad example. No, 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 no. I'm saying in general, I understood what you meant before it. And I don't know if I would say that Unique that's a perspective. Yeah. They all, yeah, all the Patreons saying perspective. I, I understood exactly what yeah. you meant. I don't know if I actually consider that to be one of my skills, but I'm going to accept what you're giving to me okay. to use in this uh, um, whole experiment that we're doing. I thought of one for myself also. Okay. Well, I want you to tell me after I tell everybody about the right. So what I can tell you about shopping before we ever use Thrive for us in our household, we actually do really try to keep non-toxic stuff out of our house. This has been something we've been doing since little Marcus was very little and diagnosed with asthma. In today's market, listen, if you start when you start looking up what's inside of these ingredients, you're going to find out that you're just bringing deadly things into your house left and right. Mm-hmm. Cancer causing formaldehyde, like there's so many things. So being able to find a place to, to shop that you can feel like you're shopping with safety is what we found in Thrive. Finding all your grocery items in one place at an affordable price is almost impossible now. But with Thrive, I get everything I need and so much more. With Thrive Market, you can shop everything from healthy pantry essentials, sustainable meat and seafood, to non-toxic cleaning and beauty items, all delivered right to your door. And if you find a price lower elsewhere, Thrive Market will match it. Thrive Market carefully vets each and every item so that you can trust that you can trust that if they sell it, it's probably the highest quality available. Finding everything you need is easy on Thrive Market because you can filter uh, by 19, 9, 90 plus values, sorry, and lifestyles to find what works for you. Shop by what you eat and what matters to you most. With over 5,000 food, home, and beauty products, finding what you need is easy with Thrive Market. So if you are looking for plant-based, keto, gluten-free, zero waste, um, BIPOC-owned brands, Thrive Market has you covered. First of all, the fact that they purposefully are making sure that they have products that are owned by black and indigenous people of color is come on somebody yeah. you are hey. not going to be finding that in, in other places and thrive really does have great products there's a granola that i got from there that is so good <laughs> i was like okay i'm getting a little a little uh crazy with this granola it's they really do have some of the best products um you all should check them out when you join Thrive Market, you're joining a community of 1 million plus members and sponsoring a family in need. And with their free, I mean, fast, free, carbon neutral shipping, you're also bettering your planet. Y'all already know, I say put your money where your heart is. So if you're a person that's trying to live a better, cleaner life, and you also want to be able to know that you're getting high quality, non-toxic products, Thrive is where you should go. Join Thrive Market today and get $80 in free groceries. That's T-H-R-I-V-E Market dot com slash argue argue to get I listen I slowed down because I was like is that right eighty dollars to get eighty dollars in free groceries that's thrivemarket dot com slash argue argue thrivemarket dot com slash argue argue eighty dollars I'm about to go get some more groceries <laughs> <laughs> okay what's your other one just you're very creative basically 
Okay, got it. Um, Michelle made it clear. I was like, yes, yeah, that's another way. It's, I, that's I'll, give that. I'll give that. I'll give that. I am. I'll I'll take it. Um, I'm adaptive. Okay, and tell me how. Um, just for me, coming to California was not something that I was looking to do. Mm-hmm. I adapted to that environment. Uh, going from being an electrician to entering a completely different career of building engineering, then moving over into general contracting. Again, that's adapting. And now retiring and being in the world of social media. I feel like I adapt very well. Okay. Regardless of how slow it may be, I do adapt. That's what I was about to say. It's slower and it is with a fight to it, but you do do it. You be... You be having your gloves up. the thing is, is the social media thing is not something that I needed to do. You right. So that's why I'm like, I don't know if I, I don't even know if I would consider myself adapting slow. Like slow in rel- relative to what? Slow meaning you will complain about the change for a very long time before you stop complaining oh, about it. Right. That's what I mean by slow. You, when I think of someone who's <laughs> adapts, they just adjust and move on. You will. I'm going to vent about it. I'm in an (laughs) uncomfortable situation, yeah. Uh, And that's what it is. It's the, you're uncomfortable for a long time. That's the part that's slow. Oh. That's, there we go. That's the best way you you took the words out of my mouth. Uh, I would only say it's slow because you're uncomfortable for a longer period of time. Compared to? If somebody said they were adaptable, I would think the time would be shorter. That's it. That's all. Go ahead. (laughs) <laughs> based on somebody who's had to move around a lot in her life that's mm-hmm. that's all uh, I'm basing it off of I would say uh, the same thing I gave you would be my third one is my strength mm-hmm. that I am actually physically strong mm-hmm. as a uh, as a woman I'm not like bodybuilder strong but like uh, it is definitely a skill that I don't get to use often in my work but it is a skill set that nonetheless, if stuff started, if if the world came to the point of either you live or you die, I got a good chance of living. Mm-hmm. What, what, no, out of those three skills, now what are your ty- what are your three again? You gave me creativity. Mm-hmm. You gave me um, intelligence. Oh uh, yeah, my intelligence, and I gave strength. myself strength. Uh huh. So what is your top creativity? Creativity. Mm-hmm. Why? Why is it my top strength? Yeah. I get to operate in it more than anything else, so it's just sharpened. I get mm-hmm. to operate in that thing every single day. Yeah, I can turn off my intelligence at a lot of times. <laughs> <laughs> Everything's automated. Most times it's off. Uh, yeah, yeah. Everything is automated, so I don't really have to use it. We're going to cruise at seventy five percent. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, yeah, I'm not in a lot of uh uh. Pl- I'm not in a lot of spaces where I have to work at the height of my intelligence, but I do have to work at the height of my creativity. So yeah. that's the only reason why it's not my number one yeah. for and you. Mine, you said my it was my strength, my Me- being mechanically inclined, uh-huh. and I gave... You said adaptable. adaptable I would say three. my top, I would have to say my mechanical inclination. 100 uh, freaking percent because uh, again i've had to operate in that so much of my life yeah um in so many different aspects situations i didn't even uh expect to be in mm-hmm. it's just like that that kind of goes into autopilot and it operates at 100 percent. like yeah <laughs> like I, I remember it was a i don't know this was years ago and we were somewhere one of one of our, we didn't know this young lady. One of our friends' friends' car was like stuck. We were in like downtown LA leaving the club, and she had parked on the hill and couldn't get her car into. Uh, yeah, and out of gear. Uh huh. And uh, I was telling them, I said, "Well, y'all gonna have to get behind the car and push." And it was literally stuck, so I had to take her console apart and figure out. <laughs> <laughs> and just now that I think back on it, I said I had never worked on a car like that. And when I say stuff apart, like that, like in the Marcus, dark, how would I'm you like, know I'm that? Like looking at the stuff, and I'm like figuring out what's what's locked. Stuck my hand in there and got it into neutral. I'm like, all right. 
And he's um, like, yeah, people know this. People do it. And I'm like, no, they don't. They do be doing it. Shut up. They be up. figuring that out. So that's my, that'd be my top. So if that was gone. That was gone, I am shit out of luck. <laughs> <laughs> um if so if that was gone if i lost my mechanical inclination i would have to say and what would you question? do to compensate i what think would I do to compensate i would have to well because i feel like i adapt <laughs> strength i won't i don't know what the strength but the strength will play no part i don't feel i think i would just have to adapt um i think i would have to i know what you would do what i think you would use that strength you would get into the gym you get super shredded you would start your only fans and just be out here <laughs> i gotta get shredded to start only fans apparently <laughs> i think you would be like oh, strength just to be successful yeah you um, would just be like yeah i, I guess i would i'll probably just work out yeah and in be this pretty new world, start only fans gucci <laughs> just be. better a lot better off than what i am now <laughs> What you doing right now? Just vacuuming. <laughs> Got all my Calvin Klein's just vacuuming up. <laughs> Sweeping. You would just get shredded and be light cute. Bulbs. <laughs> put the, uh, get up on the ladder, put the camera at crotch level. <laughs> I'd be like, yeah, absolutely. Uh, what about you? If I lost my creativity, she I. Would go teach. Listen, I was exactly what I was about to say. <laughs> but no, I would be a, a pediatric nurse. Pediatric nurse? Mm-hmm. I would be around babies. Yeah. All day. At least I would still, even though I wouldn't be around creativity, I'd be around creation. And that would be. You said creation? Yeah. Pediatric yeah. nurse, mainly like in a neo, a neonatal um nursery in a hospital so that's oh. when the babies are first born yeah. that's where i would uh i would just put myself where new life new creations were being made and just be like i wonder what you're gonna do be like well i, I don't have creativity so i can't imagine it <laughs> just wait <laughs> i'll just wait and see right, what happens be a doula, but i'm like nah you think you gotta be creative to even think you would be a doula i don't want to stare at women's coochies like it yeah. i don't uh uh-uh. now I'm just playing. I could be a postpartum doula, but then I still ain't gonna help you. I'm just gonna be looking at your child. I'm gonna be like, ha, ha, ha. I just want to hold babies and help people maybe breastfeed. That would probably be be it. Those would be the two things. But even with breastfeeding, though, you have to be able to be yeah. very like my intelligence would help because I would study really hard to be able to figure out the problems that people are having. So I wouldn't have to be necessarily creative to f- come up with solutions, but, uh, yeah, it would be something around babies. Like, uh, yeah. Like even the breastfeeding thing, because like, it's, it's almost, um, it's not as, it's, I think it's coming back, but it, for a while it wasn't nearly as popular. Like breastfeeding was almost like, Seemed like it was falling off. Yeah, it faded for chart. a minute. So then to have new mothers that don't plan on breastfeeding and trying to talk them in or show them the proper way mm-hmm. and get them to understand, no, your baby wants to latch, mm-hmm. you know, or wants to figure it out. I think it'll still think it involve a lot of creativity. There is in convincing. Like, I can only work with people who are determined. I'd uh-huh. be like, if uh-huh. I got to okay. convince you at she all. She do it, it's all right. I'd be like, nope, it's not for you. <laughs> Move it on. Let's go. <laughs> I would, I mean, I would only be able to work with women who the community really around them to. were like, yeah, girl, you can do it. And they also wanted to because so much while breastfeeding, there's a lot of physical parts to it of you being in the right like position and the baby's mouth doing the right thing. The, the mental part of it can tear that whole entire physical part down to where it's just not. And you're right. I would have to use creativity that I wouldn't have to try to get them in the right mindset. And I'll be like, girl, go ahead, find you some formula, and live your life. Mm-hmm. I'm going to work with these people who are just like, this baby going to take his tit. Yeah, I wonder if I could train dogs. 
What Thank just you. happened? I think I trained dog. Wait, that lets me know that you stopped listening to me about seven listening. seven to ten seconds ago. I was listening. And dogs were just barking in your head. <laughs> I, you what, I was listening. Dogs were I was, just. I, was saying, <laughs> I got to think of the next thing to keep the conversation going. Is that what you so thought? I, I can't just do fan only uh, whatever it's called. Only, to, yes, you could. I might not be able to. Why wouldn't you be what able to? What if I ain't where I need to be? I don't know. What you mean? I don't know. Can I have options? No, you're yeah. doing OnlyFans. We need this money. And I can train dogs. No. Yeah, I already be training people's dogs. <laughs> no, you don't. You be kicking people's dogs. I don't kick nobody's dog. You be snatching them up. Yeah, dogs need to be snatched up. That's what their mamas do to them when they act up. Marcus, they don't give them treats. <laughs> Marcus is not a, um, what are they called? Authentic parent, no gentle parenting when it comes to dogs. Have you ever seen even wolves <laughs> or a mom, the way a mom dog treats her pup? She growls and snaps, but she don't actually bite them. It's a touch. It's about having that energy. Not, no, don't bite on people. Here, take the treat. No. Marcus. Mm-mm. Marcus, I'll be, I'll be like, people when people. People's like, no, you want your dog to walk on leash or walk off leash. It takes six to eight weeks. It takes three times of walking that dog over a day. To get a dog to walk off leash. Marcus keeps going, why does this dumb dog no, your sit dog beside is, me? Your She's dog not, not dumb. She's not intelligent at yes, all. How, what makes her dumb? What dog do you call and it runs the opposite direction? A dog that thinks it's about to get whooped. You ain't never whooped. You are terrified to let that dog out front of the house. Oh, you talking about when she runs yeah. away? Oh, she's she acts out. She's not dumb. All right, she acts out. She does. She acts out. She's like, I'm free. She's like a little teenager. She's hot. She's out here. She's trying to be a teenage mom, and I'm trying to stop her. Anyway, with Angel and the kids. But that's not when you be calling her stupid. You be calling her dumb when she lays beside you when you come home. I don't call her dumb for that. I call her dumb for taking food to the carpet and eating it. That's dumb. (laughs) She pisses me off. It has trauma from when... You heard her when she uh, growled at Amar because he used to put his hands all up yeah, in her food. Can't do that. I know, she and don't that's do why. That I li- and that's but that's I didn't also give her a treat. No, don't. But that's also baby. why she takes her food to the carpet in the hopes that Amar hey, will why? just stay at her bowl. <laughs> it's an instinctive thing. I've seen other dogs do it. Usually, like I've had dogs. If you give them like something big, big piece of meat. They will take it out of their bowl and take it to like the corner of the yard or somewhere and eat it. She just gets a mouthful of kibble. Takes to the carpet, spits it out, and just eats it. I'm like, no, absolutely not. It's a diet she's on. It's a. I hate the excuses <laughs> that she gives herself in this dog. She's not a dumb dog though. She's very sweet. That don't mean she's smart because she's, she's sweet. She is very smart. She's very smart. When she doesn't have on her donut, she goes over to the neighbor's yard to take a crap. That's a smart dog, if you <laughs> I ask me. It. Angel's the worst dog owner. The only thing she doesn't do as a bad dog owner is she doesn't beat the dog. Everything else is awful. <laughs> no, uh, I love on her. I like, rub her. Characterizes somebody as a bad dog owner. I'm sure, like physically hurting the dog is on there. She doesn't do that. I with take everything else. But I do good things. I take her to. Well, she gets groomed. She gets groomed for Angel, not for her. What you mean for she me? She gets groomed because you want her to look cute. No, she gets groomed because I want her to be clean. And yeah. not mad at, we couldn't have, uh, well, Lottie, I mean, not Lottie, Callie hated everybody. So I didn't really want to continue to take her to, um, they would be like, she was really, she really was not enjoying. I was like, cause she hates it and she would stress out. So then she ended up being her little sewer rat looking self where Lottie, she loves the groomers. She, she loves, loves it. Her loves teeth everybody. are pearly white. She looks great. Anyway, I train dogs. You would train dogs. How are you? And you what do you only. use it? So you in fans only, mm-hmm. or what only about fan, only? whatever it's called? <laughs> I don't know. Wait a minute. So you're using your strength and your ad- adaptability yeah. to train dogs because you're just gonna no. You gonna mm-hmm. Marcus be he be heavy handed with these dogs? No, I know. It looks heavy handed. You talking about? I'm I've not seen. With dogs. Wait a minute! I have seen you be mad at Supreme. Supreme X, those are hard-headed <laughs> ass dogs. Okay, and so you're saying <laughs> you were weren't fighting. heavy? It was three of us fight back there fighting. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't get these fools to stop fighting. 
let Supreme do something that you didn't want him to do, you would do what? I would just yell at him. No. As a pup, I had to let him know. And what were you doing to let him know? I don't know. What was I doing? You would roll up. You would find something to roll up. Oh, yeah, thick, the newspaper? Thick newspaper. Yeah. Thick. And what? I, I didn't like I did it for an extended amount of time. <laughs> okay, but don't make it seem like but, all I did but was. But I did, I did it a <laughs> couple times. Now, all of a sudden, I'm like, hey, no. And it stops. It ain't, oh, let me set him over here and give him a treat and do that crap for six months. No. I recall a shovel. The shovel, because I, th- I thought he attacked our goddamn niece. Mm-hmm. Yes, our niece. <laughs> and I went out there and yelled at him, and he growled at me. See? And snapped. <laughs> Look at victory His coming up. dog is 125, 130 pounds. I ain't going to do Oh, give him a treat because he growled now. So Things what, got, to get, got to happen. So what are you going to do? <laughs> Victory's listen. What are you going to do? You going to go out there, do your OnlyFans shirtless, and uh, train the dogs on OnlyFans? Mm-hmm. Angel ain't about to give me counsel talking about this dog. I'm going to let you know the way Angel does a horrible <laughs> job. Absolutely horrible job at taking care of a dog. Ask, how much, ask where the dog's dog house is. The dog's dog house? Mm-hmm. Inside the house. What about when she's outside? She doesn't need a dog house outside. Why not? She ain't never been outside all day and all night? Never all night. But what's all night? All night, overnight. Overnight into the morning. But how late has she been outside? <laughs> she's been out there late, but she's got comfortable places to lay. Couple of places to lay. Comfortable, I said. Yeah, comfortable places to lay. We got coyotes, bobcats. <laughs> we got Listen, owls. And I got her be long before we moved to this <laughs> house. On. Now let's go to the next thing. Water. How often does she get fresh water outside? Outside, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> I don't know. Well, because when I'm home, when I'm home, I have her inside with me. But when I'm gone, I don't know what's happening. Anyway, yes, I trained dog. As to Nora, I had I had her both her dogs acting just fine in a couple of hours. We're not gonna ask the Nora nothing about her dogs. They were doing. She was like, "Oh my God, I had no idea." That's all it takes. Remove the treat crap. Just let the dog know that you are in charge. Lottie knows how to lay and sit because of me. Thanks. I'm a great. You are awful. I'm great. Angel said, now, somebody better not steal my dog. I said, that dog would get rescued. It would not get stolen. Oh, no. She's happy. Shut your mouth. She's happy. She don't know no better. Uh, You know, we are supposed to do another segment. and Are we done? No, it's not that we're done. It's not that we're out of time. We don't have the peace for it. To (laughs) to take our advice. We be forgetting to do that. Take our advice is where we get advice from our Patreon, but we have to pre-get those. So this is what we're going to do because we want to. No, I like it when we have sound to it. All right. This is what we're going to do. We're going to tell our Patreon, who hopefully are still watching after me. Marcus just had this whole conversation about him and dogs. Um, <laughs> un, un, yeah, unshake your oh, head. It's, it's awful. Whatever. Whatever. So um, we're going to have our Patreon submit their tank, our advice, um, questions now. So that we can have them for the rest of the year because this is what always happens. We get started and then I remember, oh, I don't have the audio for this. So we want to be able to have the audio because I like being able to hear our Patreon members' voices. So if you would like to be able to submit a question for Tank Your Advice, join our Patreon. And then you can uh, 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 send us a Tank Our Advice question that we will answer. We've had a couple of really, really good ones the last two times we did them. So I actually really like this segment and it seems, and it does the, the, this segment does really well on our social media. Mm -hmm. It's like, it is the best of our snippets that we um, add to the, um, our Instagram. If you're not following us on Instagram, you can follow this podcast at, is this going to cause an argument on Instagram? Um, what? Nothing. You go ahead. And what? I you're leading the show and that's why I just stopped. Okay. So you would be a teacher and I was stripping trained dogs. 
I didn't say I'd be a teacher. I'm sorry. Uh, you would be working around babies. I'd be a nurse. I hope you're a better nurse than a dog owner. Anyway. <laughs> I was about to say, I hope you'd be a better dog trainer than the dog <laughs> trainer the dog, dream, you dream, are. Dream, dream, dream. You are. Anyway, fam. We hope y'all enjoyed it. Yes. We got to get up out of here so I can make sure that Angel's dog has water outside and make sure she got fed today. Ooh, ASPCA. Uh, <laughs> anyway, thank y'all for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you haven't already, make sure you like down below, subscribe, and share, and all that jazz. Go on, let them know. You can find me at That Chick Angel. Just search that. You're going to find me somewhere. That Chick Angel. Y'all can find me on Instagram at Marcus on the Gram. Facebook, Marcus on the Book. TikTok at Tank Don't Talk. You can find me on my other podcast called Let Us Tell It on Tanksley TV and across all podcast streaming platforms. And uh, you can check out my beard and body butter called Man Shit. That's M-A-N-S-H-Y-T dot com. You can go check that out. All right. Anyway, fam, catch y'all next week. Y'all have a good one. Bye. Bye.